Guys, how we doing? Welcome to Goodworks Tractors. Today, we're gonna do another John Deere versus Kubota comparison in the John Deere 2 Series, the Full Frame 2 Series, and the Kubota B Series, or now known as the LX. So stick around. Really quick, I am proud to be sponsored by Boro Wheel Spacers. I wanted to partner with somebody who could help with tractor safety. Wheel spacers are gonna widen the footprint of your machine. This B2650 that we got in happens to have Boro Wheel Spacers on it right now. Pretty darn cool. If you're looking for a stability solution for your tractor, make sure you check out Bora. And if you guys enjoy this video, I don't know unless you give me some feedback. You can do that in a few different ways. Just give me a thumbs up. You can hit that subscribe button down below. You can even leave a comment as well with something helpful about the video, something you can add to it, or something you took away. And as always, if you're looking for something for your tractor, you gotta head on over to goodworkstractors.com. We have a wide array of attachments and accessories available. Check it out, goodworkstractors.com. Okay, we're gonna do a mixture, well, mainly facts, a little bit of my opinion because I get asked my opinion all the time, so why not share it? If you wanna know what tractor I would go with, the Kubota, the John Deere, which model, stick around to the end. Okay, so we have a few models here, actually two models, uh, two are the exact same, but we have a Kubota B2650 over here, a John Deere 2038R in the middle, and then another Kubota B2650. However, this comparison if you're in the market shopping, you know, I sell used tractors, not new. So we're dealing with what I have. But this is going to include for the Kubotas, the B2650 and the B3350. I should probably touch on that later, why you should not get the B3350. And then also the newest generation, the LX2610 and the LX3310. Very similar to what you see right here. Now on the John Deere, you're gonna have the John Deere 2032R and the 2038R. Now pay attention, it gets confusing because that's what these manufacturers do. I guess there's an evolution to the products that's gonna go along with it as well. There's an old style of John Deere 2032R, which is really not anything like this. I've done a comparison specifically on the old versus a new generation or the Gen 1 versus Gen 2 generation on the 2032R. So we're just gonna stick with the current generation or Gen 2 of the 2032 slash 2038, which besides the horsepower, they're virtually identical. Okay, first thing I wanna touch on are gonna be the powertrain, all right? Let's talk about the engine, the transmission, tier four, you know, it's kind of an important thing to know. So for the Kubota, really doesn't matter if it's the B2650 or the LX2610, it's gonna be a 26 horsepower Kubota manufactured engine. Yes, they do make their own engines. On the larger model, so the B3350 or the LX3310, that's gonna be roughly 31 horsepower, uh, also manufactured by Kubota. So the John Deere Full Frame 2 Series does not have a 20 some horsepower engine. It's gonna be the 32 and then the 38 horsepower that you see here. Both of those are manufactured by Yanmar, which has been making engines for John Deere and for themselves and many, many others for decades and decades and decades, a very reliable engine. So tying into tier four, one of the great things about the B2650 the LX2610 is that it gets underneath, just under that tier four emissions requirement. In my opinion, it's not a huge deal. Uh, it's gonna drive the cost up to add that additional compliance on there. You know, it's a DPF typically, which is a diesel particulate filter. Basically what that is, it's kind of like a soot collector. So it's gonna collect all that, uh, that exhaust, um, soot and remnants and contaminants. And then at a certain point, it's going to instruct your engine to rev up, generate enough heat and kind of burn that off. Now, for the most part, these systems are very reliable. You don't really have anything to worry about. The one big exception, and I covered this in a video uh, about a year ago, is the B3350. That model of tractor, I tell folks to avoid at all costs. And I know there's people out there that have that machine that have never had an issue. That's fantastic, you know, go buy a lotto ticket. But I can't in good conscience sell one of those to somebody else knowing that they could have some serious issues that Kubota didn't stand behind. They maybe sort of have a fix, but there are horror stories all over the internet. If you just Google B3350 problems or B33 tier four or whatever, anything along those lines, you're gonna see a, a long reading list. You could read it all night long about the horror stories involved with that model of tractor. John Deere does have another model that starts with two, the 2025R. However, it is not a full frame. You know, it's not the same dimensions. It's more of a one and a half series, a little bit bigger than the 1025R, but certainly a lot smaller. 
than the 2032, 2038. I've also covered that in another video. I don't want to get into it now, but that would be the 25-ish horsepower model. As far as horsepower goes, that would get you underneath that tier four compliance requirement. Again, I don't think that's the be all end all, but it is going to drive the cost up and it's just something to be aware of. So I just want to point out, these are going to be premium models, no matter which way you go, Kubota or John Deere. So that means they have things like tilt steering and cruise control, suspension seats, so a lot of bells and whistles, and it will depend a little bit on the model that you get on what exactly is included. Of course, if you get a cab, you're going to have something like a radio too. But keep that in mind, because a lot of the more plain Jane models, maybe like a, a B2601, for example, or if you go to a John Deere 3E series as another example, they're going to strip away a lot of these things that drive up the cost just to get you into a more plain Jane type of utility tractor. So they're going to keep the cost down, but still allow you to get the work done. Let's spend just a minute talking about the difference in the transmission. The Kubotas, love this about them one of my favorite things that's my opinion interjected right there they have a three range transmission hydrostatic that's the only thing you can get for any of these john deeres and kubotas there's no gear drive or power reverser of any kind but a three range hydro transmission low medium and high i love the different incremental levels of speed and torque that you can get for different applications. Anytime I have a three range transmission, I find myself living in that medium range almost all of the time. So the John Deere's are gonna come with a two range, a high and low range, so there's no medium involved. I do find myself bouncing around between those ranges a little bit more frequently. It's the same thing on my 1025R. The Kubota BX will be the same way, but um, that medium range sure is nice, and in my opinion, John Deere did a good job when they redesigned the 2R series. However, one of their misses was not including that third range in their transmission. Now it's not that John Deere doesn't know how to do or have a three range transmission because their 3R, their 4M, and their 4R series compact tractors all have a three range transmission. They just chose not to incorporate that into their 2R redesign. So one consideration may be actually how you make the tractor go forwards or backwards. What pedals do you push? With the John Deere, you're gonna have two side-by-side -side pedals, a forward and a reverse. You're gonna have a, a split brake over on the far side, your left side as well, and a pretty open floor mat or floor space for your feet as well. So on the Kubota, how you're gonna operate the transmission, the hydro transmission, you're gonna have a single, it's called a treadle pedal, forward and reverse, and you can operate it kind of with your foot on it or off of it, just the toe or the heel. Um, bit of a different pedal configuration. I feel like it eats up more of the, the floorboard and the floor space, so it's just a little bit, uh, I don't know, it, it, it's not my favorite. I mean, that's, that's just my opinion, but I know a lot of guys have it and they don't mind it, so you probably just get used to it if that's what you have. It's also gonna have a split brake over on the left side, so again, you can have those pedals combined and just treat it as one brake, which is probably what 95% of folks do. You can also separate those and have just your left or right brake if you're trying to really enhance or in, um, minimize your turning radius either to the left or to the right. Let's talk about warranty really quick, which is going to be virtually identical if you are a private homeowner, you know, just regular consumer, residential, not commercial. They're both going to come with a concurrent two year bumper to bumper, and then a six year powertrain warranty. They're also gonna have a long emissions warranty if you do have one that has a tier four emissions on it, but that's gonna be transferable. So if you buy a used tractor that's say just a year or two old, you're gonna have whatever the remaining balance is where a dealer, Kubota or John Deere, just looks at the serial number of the tractor and is going to just look it up in their system, see if it's still under the year, um, you know, requirement or, or envelope there. And then same thing, they're going to have a, typically a 2000 hour limitation. So which for most of us that are just using these on our own land, we're never going to reach maybe even in the lifetime of using the tractor. Now to make sure you're aware that warranty is going to apply to just the tractor, not the loader, the mower or the backhoe. Okay, we're going to start going over the main attachments you can get the loader and the mower, the backhoe, cab or no cab. Let's start with the loaders first. There's gonna be one model of loader that's available for whether it's the Kubota or the John Deere. You know, whatever your tractor has on it, you can't say, hey, there's a better or a worse option. You are able to get a non-leveling loader or a mechanical leveling loader. The mechanical version of that means that when you are raising or lowering the loader, say you have, the easiest example is a set of forks, but say you have a set of forks on there, you're trying to keep a pallet level as you raise and lower it. The mechanical loader will allow you to keep it level. 
with the non self-leveling loader the kind of the standard that that pallet fork is going to start to tilt back as you raise or vice versa if you had it level when it's up high as you're lowering it it's going to want to tilt down to the ground so it just means you have to feather the controls and that is a little easier to do on the Kubota versus the John Deere so that's Luke up there this is uh, this is summer break right now that's why we keep him busy with camps and other activities I probably need to have him pull those weeds that he's sitting right by hey Luke you pull those weeds There you go. Lift height for all of these is going to be nearly identical. It's about 84 inches for any of the um, Kubota models, 85 inches for the John Deere, and that's going to be the maximum height. They measure that at these pivot points right here. So, you know, it's going to give you a, a rough comparison that no matter which one you go with, it's going to be about the same lift height. So lift capacity, the amount that you can lift up with the front end loader is measured a lot of different ways. We're going to give you just one of those numbers. That way it kind of simplifies the whole process. And you're really, you're pretty close either way. It's almost a rounding error. But with the John Deere, you're going to have about 1,120 pounds. A couple different measurements or weight capacities depending on which loader you get for the Kubotas, but it ranges from 1,070 to 1,150. So you're right within maybe 50, 60 pounds either way at most, no matter which model you get. Again, that's just about a rounding error. I wouldn't really make that a big consideration either way. I had forgotten a few things I wanted to mention about the loaders, so we're gonna splice these in while we're talking about them. But on the newer Kubotas, like the LX series, the 2610 and the 3310, it's gonna be a single point hydraulic connection. So you don't have to have four different hydraulic couplers that you're disconnecting or reconnecting when you wanna take your loader on and off. That's gonna be an option on the John Deere. It's not standard, but it's an option that you can add on if you want to. Both of these loaders are quick parks, so that means you can take them on and off pretty quickly. The older design of the Kubota is not quite as quick as the newer design. Uh, the John Deere is very easy to take on and off. I've done a lot of videos on that, but this isn't a challenge, but the new design on the LX is that much easier. Now, as far as bucket attachment goes, John Deere is going to have a standard system called the John Deere Quick Attach. This is included in the base price of the loaders. On the Kubota, you are going to pay for an upgrade to have the skid steer quick attach coupler. You should see a line item on your quote from most dealers. Sometimes they might roll that in, but it's typically about a $500 upcharge. The base loader is going to have a pinned bucket on there. And I know a lot of those dealers are really starting to migrate over, but it's just something to consider and make sure you note it that you're going to have the skid steer quick attach coupler on your Kubota. Mower deck options, pretty simple. 60 or 72 inch are going to be your options for any of the models that we're discussing today. I'm going to give you my opinion right here. But the biggest difference between these mower decks is the fact that this is going to be a standard drive over and auto connect deck. And why I think that's important, we're talking about the John Deere, is the fact that you do not want to leave your belly mower on if you are not using it. If you are in the woods or in the fields, areas where there's rough terrain where it's easy, you can see there's not much ground clearance underneath, especially with the gauge wheels and everything else, a lot of spots to have a stump or a rock or a, an uneven hunk of ground really whack it and knock things out of alignment and damage your mower decks. So essentially you're going to be less prone to damage your machine with a more convenient system. Come on muscles. There you go. One important difference to note Maybe it matters to you, maybe it doesn't, but the John Deere, when they did their redesign, again, a lot of good improvements when they did that, they went to something called a command cut system, which is an independent control to raise and lower your mower deck. Traditionally, tractors are going to raise and lower the mower deck with your three-point control or your rock shaft control. So the same control that would make whatever's back here, say a tiller or a brush hog, go up and down, when you do that and move that lever, it's gonna raise and lower the mower deck at the same time. That's how the Kubotas are set up. But now with the command cut system, it's got a separate control and um, mower deck height adjustment knob and everything else kind of situated right up here with some electronic um, relays and, and telling you what your cut height is up here and where the mower deck is at and the raise and lower and on and on. 
It's definitely more complicated and more involved, but it does give a whole other level to the mowing experience. However, as you can expect with something kind of complicated and pretty fancy smancy like this, it is definitely going to drive the cost up of the system and the tractor overall. So you kind of got to weigh that pro and con. There's not a way to get it without this system. Let's touch on backhoes really quick. There's going to be one option that's available for the Kubota or the John Deere, not multiple options. There is a significant difference though. And it was a little hard to find for the John Deere, but I think I've got the right dimension, which is an 84 inch deep, two foot flat bottom digging depth. Okay, that's for whatever reason, that's how they measure these things. But if you were digging as far down as you could and you wanted to make a two foot section that was all the same depth, 84 inches down is as far as you could go with a John Deere. On the Kubota, you're gonna have a 92 inch deep, two foot flat bottom digging depth. So again, as far down as you can go on a two foot section, all being the same depth, 92 inches is as far down as you can go. So 84 inches on the deer, 92 inches on the Kubota. And I think that's validated also by taking one other measurement, which is the maximum reach from the pivot point, you know, that swinging point where that starts on both of the backhoes. On the Kubota, you can go 125 inches out versus 117 inches out on the deer. So that eight inch difference in maximum reach is reflected in the maximum two foot flat bottom digging depth. Since we're here staring at the back end of these machines, let's give you the three point lift capacities as well. There's a 320 pound difference between these two machines or any of the Kubotas versus any of the deers. Can you guess which one lifts more? 1,670 pounds on the Kubota, 1,350 on the deer. That is a huge difference. This next point is gonna to matter to some of you folks, not to others, but I can tell you what, it matters to me. It matters to me. I'm talking about tractor cabs. Now, if you want to get a cab that has air conditioning and heat built right in like it's part of the tractor, only one of these is gonna have that option available and that's gonna be the Kubota. You can get any of them from the factory, any of the horsepower variations, the LX, the B, either one with a factory cab it's a beautiful it's a wonderful cab so i'm six foot three i'm about 200 pounds give or take fits in here pretty well i fit on the john deere open station as well but if you want to get a john deere that's one of the big misses i think that they did is i i can't even fathom the fact that they spent all of that engineering manpower creating a redesigned beautiful two series tractor and then didn't give a factory cab as an option i think it's a big miss there are aftermarket cabs available that you can get equipped with heat, but not air conditioning. And there's just a big difference. You know, they're, they're not cheap. You know, aftermarket cabs can still be thousands and thousands of dollars. And you just don't get the same feeling of quality. You know, sometimes they're a rattle box, they're very noisy inside. So if you're looking for a cab, you're gonna have to go with a Kubota. And since we have the three points right here, I wanna point out one other big difference, which is gonna be the style of adjustment for the lower arms on the John Deere. You're gonna have just a traditional style of turnbuckle. You have to loosen a nut in this case, and then you can uh, shorten or lengthen a rod to make the lower arms separate further or come in closer to one another. The Kubota is gonna have what's called a telescoping draft link. So it's a two piece system. You have an inner and an outer piece where you can pull one of these pins, easily slide the lower links, pretend you didn't have a, a quick hitch on here, but easily slide these lower arms in and out and then just reset your position by putting the pin back in. It's a really nice way to go about doing so and I don't get why John Deere couldn't do it as well. Okay, let's talk about some dimensions, physical weight of the machines and tire size as well. These are important considerations. Let's go with weight first, which we're gonna compare if these were all open stations. So just take the cab off of these and there is gonna be a four to 500 pound weight difference between the John Deere and the Kubota with the John Deere weighing that four to 500 pounds more than the Kubota open station. So for the John Deere, it doesn't matter the model, the 2032 or the 38 is gonna weigh about 2,400 pounds. Now the B series does fluctuate and vary, but these smaller variants like the B2650, the LX2610, are gonna weigh in around 1,800 pounds. So that's actually <laughs> about 600 pounds difference right there. Now that I'm doing some more math in my head. But if you go to the B3350 or the LX3310, you're gonna go to 1,900 to about 2,100 pounds. So those are gonna be a little bit heavier, a um, little bit more steel, I guess, in there. The tire size is gonna be a little bit larger as well. That accounts for some of that, but either way, even the big variants of the B 
and the LX are gonna be significantly less weight than the John Deere. And for a point of reference, if you do end up adding on one of the cabs of the Kubotas, ballpark about 500 pounds of additional weight. As far as the width goes for any of these models, you're pretty much right at 54 inches wide. Of course, you can make some adjustments if you reverse the wheels to give yourself a slightly wider or narrower footprint, or maybe even if you add some wheel spacers like what you see over on this B2650 right here. As far as wheelbase, center of the front wheel to the center of the rear wheel or front axle to the rear axle, almost identical again. A couple inches longer on the John Deere, 68 inches versus 66 on the Kubotas, but that's not really anything I would worry about. The B2650 and its newer counterpart, the LX2610, will have the smallest tires of the bunch, the rears being the 12.4 by 16, the John Deere's and then the larger Kubotas, the B3350 and LX3310 are gonna have 14 by 17.5. So a little bit taller, a little bit bigger tire overall. If you're gonna have them loaded, a little bit more weight that you can put in there. An interesting note, last year I had a Kubota LX3310 quoted for myself. I was strongly considering getting one uh, with a cab on it. And the dealer actually pointed out that you could not get rear wheel weights on the 3310 and you can see this B2650, there's no holes that are in here either. So I don't think that rear wheel weights, for some reason, are an option for either of those models. If you take a look at the John Deere wheel, you can see they do have holes or provisions to add on wheel weights on all of their models. Alrighty guys, that's just about gonna wrap it up. I'm sure there's things that I forgot, but if you have something that you know about or maybe it was a consideration for you or something you wish you had one of these machines had let's leave a comment down below um, you know gonna help somebody else out by sharing that information the one thing I can think about is on the open station tractors the John Deere's do come with fender mounted work lights on them as well that's not something that's gonna be found on the Kubota's of course if you get a cab they're gonna have plenty of work light options on the on the front and the back of the cab so I told you in the beginning I was gonna give you my opinion which one would I get and I would definitely go towards one of the Kubota's uh, I do really like a, a cab though I used to not care too much so if you're looking for a cab that may be a consideration for you too but for me I love the factory cab with the air conditioning and the heat you know whether it's the the bigger or the smaller horsepower model isn't too big of a difference but the fact that you have a three range hydro transmission as well that's a main operator interface you know with with the range and the speed the torque uh, of the transmission so that's a huge consideration the one big downside for me is I don't like the treadle pedal very much. I don't think it's very comfortable for me to operate, but I do bounce around from a lot of different machines. I'm always using something different. That's just one that I'm not comfortable with. However, that being said, you know, I'm breaking course here. I'm not, I'm not going John Deere. I do think that both of them are very good tractors, but for me, I'd be going Kubota. So that's going to do it, folks. Again, I don't know what you think about the video unless you let me know. You can do so by giving me a thumbs up, hitting that subscribe button, or leaving a comment down below. And as always, if you're in the market for something for your tractor, make sure you head on over to GoodWorksTractors.com. Thanks again for stopping by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.